What's up everybody, it's Three Wheel Khalil, and today I wanted to talk about helmets. Now I hope this isn't news to you, but helmets are probably the number one piece of safety equipment that you should be wearing on your Can-Am Spider, Can-Am Riker, or really any other motorcycle on the market. You really want to protect your head, obviously we only get one of them, and uh, it, it's one of the kind of small pieces that stands between us and life and death, if anything is to happen on a motorcycle. Now, when you're thinking about buying your first helmet, let's say you just got your Riker, you just got your Spider, and you're looking to buy your first helmet. I know a lot of us, we sunk so much money into the, the motorcycle, we sunk so much money into the Spider, the Riker, that we might not want to spend a ton on gear. And I can understand that. So today, I wanted to talk specifically about budget helmets. But when you're talking about budget helmets, saving money is nice, but you do not want to cheap out. You really want to keep an eye out for safety standards on these helmets and make sure that your helmet is compliant with not only DOT regulation, which in the US is pretty lax, but you also want to look for helmets that meet some higher criteria. Uh, specifically, ECE is, is emerging, at least at the time of this video in 2023, as kind of like the gold standard. So. Uh, European standard for uh, for helmet construction ECE I'm not sure exactly what it stands for but is kind of the gold standard and there's a uh, more recent standard from this year and there's a standard from I think kind of the last two years ish and both of them are very good standards however the newest one uh, provides a little bit more um, attention to rotational mass and rotational uh, damage that that can be caused if you uh, have a helmet that isn't properly protecting you so definitely look for those ratings on the helmets try to skip helmets that just have a DOT rating go for something that has an ECE rating or even a Snell rating just that shows you that it's gone through some additional testing that they believe in that helmet to put it through that additional testing and that you have something that's gonna protect you in the event of a crash so for this video, I wanted to go through a couple of the key helmet types that I think are really applicable to Spider and Riker owners. Helmets that you can get in a budget option, especially if you just purchased a Spider, you just put, purchased a Riker, but that you're not going to skimp out on safety. So I'm gonna talk about the three categories, which are full face, Full face helmet, uh, to me, there's really nothing else. I think if you're not wearing a helmet that protects the chin area, um, why even wear a helmet? Uh, I think that, uh, you, to me, you want to protect everything. So uh, the, the, the mushroom caps, they're not for me. I, I understand we can all wear what we want to wear, but if I'm protecting myself and my loved ones, I'm putting them in a full face helmet. But there are multiple types of full face, but for the purpose of this video, the three categories are full face, kind of like the normal generic full face with a flip up visor. Then we have the retro scrambler style, which I really love in the summertime. Lets you flow a lot of air through the front, but then you get the chin bar still and uh, get that added protection. And then the modular helmet, which is like a full face, but you get the added benefit of being able to flip up the bottom half of the helmet, be able to drink from a drink or talk to another rider at a stoplight. It just gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, there is a little bit of a trade-off usually in price. It usually costs a little bit more and possibly in safety because you really want to invest in a good modular helmet since you're adding additional complexity to the construction. For the full face option, we have a newcomer to the segment, which is the HJC C10. HJC has been around a long time, but this C10 helmet is pretty new and it's causing a little bit of confusion out in the market, uh, but I still wanted to recommend it because I do think it's a great deal. And from everything that I've seen, I do believe that it carries um, the, the safety that you would want. So the, I guess, point of contention is, is that the HJC C10 in the US doesn't carry the ECE rating that the helmet in Europe does. There's not a lot of information to point to that the helmets are any different, but maybe that HJC has not gone through the process of validating those helmets for the US market, as it probably saves them money in the US market since it is technically not a US standard. DOT is the US standard. So I'd love to see HJC come out and address that and kind of tell people that, hey, this is the same helmet regardless of where you buy it. 
but if you want to be sure then you can buy it from a UK outlet and pay a little bit more for shipping it's still a dirt cheap helmet that has all of the kind of features that you would want out of a basic helmet and then some you know you're getting your full visor you're getting pin lock ready shield you're getting ECE protection if you purchase the one from Europe um, there's really not much more you can ask for it's a really good helmet for the price range that, that 100 to 120 to 140 dollar depending on the design that's pretty crazy for a helmet that has the features that it can accept um, comms like a Senna or a Cardo because it has the ear pockets there too so honestly it's a really really good option for the full face category moving on to the retro scrambler which is one of my favorites and this is a helmet that I personally own. It is the Biltwell Gringo ECE. So Biltwell has been making this Gringo helmet for a while now. It's kind of got that old school round head uh, vibe. You can get it with a shield in the Biltwell Gringo S or you can put a blast shield on the normal Biltwell Gringo ECE. There's all sorts of different configurations. I actually rock it with a peak, kind of like a old school scrambler or a motocross. Uh, old school helmet so that's how I run it I run it like that I don't wear a shield because I love to blow a lot of air obviously if you don't run a shield you want to protect your eyes wear a pair of shades that is impact rated so if you know a stone flies up off the road you're not going to lose your sight so that is how I prefer to wear that helmet but honestly it's one of my favorite helmets it's the helmet I usually go to if I'm going to do a quick ride if I'm going on a long interstate cruise, then I usually wear a helmet that blocks out sound a little better, and I might be wearing ear protection and stuff like that. But if I'm just doing, doing you know, quick run up to the grocery store, I usually go for the Built World Gringo ECE. It's just such a cool helmet. It looks great with any outfit that I'm wearing. It gives you that full ECE protection, and it just is so cool in the summertime. Kind of by the opposite token, in the wintertime, I don't normally go for this. I'll go for uh, my, my full face helmet, which currently is the Bell SRT. But the Biltwell Gringo ECE, you can't go wrong with it, in my opinion. It's one of my favorite helmets, and I think it always will be. And as long as they continue to make it, I'll continue to add one to my arsenal. So, the two previous helmets, I feel like a full face is kind of every rider. Every rider can enjoy it at any time of year. It's kind of the default helmet. I think everybody should have a full face. The Retro Scrambler helmet is something, if you want something a little bit different, you want something with a little different style, or you specifically are looking for something uh, to get you through summer riding if you live in a particularly hot climate like I do here in Georgia and previously in Florida. So this modular option, which is the last, I think is kind of specifically catered toward touring riders, people who spend a lot of time on uh, Spider or Riker per day because it gives you the flexibility of being able to stop, you know, go to a Culver's drive through and get, you know, a milkshake and drink it at, at the stoplight and put your helmet back down. It's, it's a pretty cool option. It just gives you some more flexibility and it allows you to have, you can even flip that up completely if you want to keep your, you know, kind of face exposed and really flow some air. You can also do that for short stretches of the trip if that's something that you desire. You have those options with the modular helmet. The big trade-off, as I alluded to earlier, is usually price. It usually costs a little bit more to get into a good modular helmet. So what I'm, uh, you know, proposing you do is look at a helmet that I have some familiarity with, at least in the full face segment, which is the Bell SRT. Obviously, Bell's been making helmets for a long time, and the Bell SRT is one of my favorite helmets personally. I think the original full face design is getting a little old in the tooth, and I actually probably sadly going to be retiring my original helmet here in the future which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because I've been thinking about new helmets but the Bell SRT modular is a newer design it comes ECE rated and it's one of the better options for someone who is looking for a modular helmet in the market today so definitely look for the Bell SRT modular it's a great helmet I like the designs that you can get on it and the original Bell, Bell SRT has done me very well. Like I said, I've been thinking about retiring my original Bell SRT. I got that helmet a good few years ago, I think back in about 2019, right before I bought my Riker. And it was, it has been an amazing helmet. It's been kind of my main go-to helmet prior to getting the Biltwell Gringo ECE into the mix. But 
one thing you want to keep in mind is that helmets have a shelf life. As you wear it, you're wearing it in the sun, the elements, and things are degrading over time, right? And so manufacturers rate these helmets when they're brand new. After a few years, usually in that three to five year range, you should start looking to upgrade your helmet, even if it's not damaged. Because you want to stay, one, current with the latest standards, and two, even current with the standards that it had when it was first manufactured. So I'm looking to retire that original helmet, and uh, I might do a, a video on what I'm looking to get because it's a little bit more of a premium helmet. Uh, I'm looking over to to our uh, friends over in Japan uh, to, to, to cook something up for me. and. Um, yeah, man, I'll, I'll definitely probably talk about that in another video. I'd love to hear what type of helmets you guys are wearing in the comments. What are your favorite helmets? What are your favorite styles of helmets? And how does that kind of pair with your riding style? What, you know, does it enable you to do anything extra? Do you ride like a super sport helmet so that, you know, you can tuck and get some more speed? I don't know, you know, people, people do different things. But just wanted to share that with you. Remember, life's always more fun on three wheels. Peace.